It is an honor to once again this year be bringing forward legislation to update Washington State's 1943 Equal Pay Law. While this law has not changed since then, our economy certainly has. In the 1940s, one in 10 women were working outside the home and the consumer age was just beginning. Today, seven out of 10 women work and we're experiencing an information and service-based economy. Despite the march toward equality that women have been making over the past 75 years, the gap between men and women's pay has only shrunk by a few coins. In fact, if we do not pass additional policies like those included in my Equal Pay Opportunity Act, it is anticipated that men and women will not see equal pay until 2071. While we often discuss the 79 cents to a man's dollar that women earn, it is even more astounding that women of African-American descent earn just 61 cents and Latina women even less. When you factor in education and training, the job and the number of hours worked, there is still a substantially unexplained pay gap. This is discrimination at work. And this bill is our work to combat that discrimination. At a juncture in time when we have removed the shroud of silence on sexual harassment, so must we eliminate the secrecy around wages, which is exactly what this bill will do. With this bill, we will prohibit employers from forcing employees to sign pay secrecy policies or adhere to a culture of secrecy. And no longer will we allow retaliation against men and women for talking about their wages. For as we know, information is power. Just ask BBC news editors, movie stars, television hosts and the like, whose stories of egregious pay inequality have splashed across the news screens in the past days and weeks. Make no mistake, however, this legislation is also geared toward the employee whose story you will never hear about. The hotel maid, the restaurant or grocery store worker, or the retail salesperson. During our year of negotiations, we have ensured that women on the high and low income pay scale have access to recourse. And we've ensured that small and large businesses alike have access to a conference and conciliation process. As a lifelong advocate of equal pay, I'm working hard on this legislation, not to protect corporate profits, but rather to ensure that corporate profits are generated by workers earning equal pay for equal work. I can't wait to pass this legislation for the women who came before us, like my mom who experienced pay discrimination, and for diverse women in our workforce today, from Yakima and Spokane to Port Angeles and Bellingham, and for the boys and girls in that second grade classroom in Bellevue, in government at Mercer Island High School, participating in youth ambassadors or advocating in Olympia or on Skype, who insist that gender equality be a fundamental tenet of a successful society well into the future.